Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's November 22nd. These are your headlines. First and foremost, happy Thanksgiving from all of us here at the Fisherman Magazine. We really appreciate all of our viewers, readers, and subscribers. We wish you nothing but the best this holiday season. On the fishing side of things, the canal had a good week, surprisingly, since it's the second half of November. And the black fishing continues to impress in Rhode Island. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Before we begin, we've got a few news items to share with you. The first one is going to be a quick rundown of what's going on in the Dreamboat Challenge this week. After such a wild week last week, and with first place changing hands, it's hard to believe that we didn't see any new entries this week. But with only eight days left in the tournament, we are set up for a thrilling finish. Let's see if anybody can knock Bobby Cifarelli down with a heroic catch in the last quarter. The top three looks like this. Norman Bouchard now holds third place with 17 points. Kyle Krause was knocked out of first place and now stands in second place with 30 points. And Bobby Cifarelli with his Titanic tog now stands alone in first place with 33 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new 21 foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Next up is going to be the latest installment of Jenny Ackerman's Open Boat. Let's see what she's got on tap this week. Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Open Boat. Today I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite moors that I never leave home without, the bucktail. Oh, <laughs> the, bu <laughs> the bucktail. <laughs> so why do I always keep the bucktail in my plug bag? I use it in the fall and the spring. The bucktail is an awesome and versatile lure. It's heavy, it helps navigate the water column. You can control where it navigates in the water column. And I've had great success with the bucktail when nothing else works. Prime example, we're in the fall run right now, waiting on peanut bunker. When those peanut bunker are here and there's bass blitzing on the peanut bunker, you're gonna be instinctually casting a top water. So that top water may not be getting the attention of the stripers. So you need something that gets in with the peanut bunker. That's when you throw a bucktail because that bucktail can get in right with the peanut bunker. You can feel as you're reeling in that bucktail, you can feel the peanut bunker freaking out around it. And then you're going to get hit because it's in with the bait. It's not above the bait. It's not below the bait. It knows where to be in the water column perfectly. Another thing with bucktails is they've been around for a long time. Literally, the Air Force used in World War II a little rescue kit, like had a raft and everything in it. It had bucktails in it because if these airplanes went down in the ocean, they needed a food source. So they had a bucktail to catch fish and survive. So not only is a bucktail helping the United States Air Force, it's helping you surf casters out. I use my bucktails in the fall and the spring. Fall time, I'll use them off the beaches, but in the spring, I'll use them, a heavier one, like a three ouncer, I'll use in some spots that have heavy current where I want that bucktail to get down and go behind the rocks to lose that current because big stripers will be hiding deep down trying to stay out of that heavy current. So I've had great success with bucktailing. The conditions with them don't really matter for fishing off the beaches. We've had days where it's nor'easter conditions. No one's fishing the beach. It's raining. The waves are 
ripping in, it's rough, and we're using this very bucktail catching stripers. It's, you're not, in those conditions, you're not gonna be using a top water. You can use your bucktail. So that's just a quick rundown on the infamous bucktail and why you should always have one in your plug bag. So make sure you guys get some. This one is the Gen X by SNS Jigs, the red head and the white body. And then this is a little trailer. It's called a JK Bait Trailer. They're really nice. And get the best out of your fishing experience with the best bang for your bucktail. And the last thing, of course, is the giveaway, which is ongoing. We've got two of them going, as a matter of fact. And the Tog Jig giveaway has really been getting a lot of great response. We've got tons of uh, photos from that, which is fantastic. And I want to remind you guys, it doesn't matter if that fish was caught like last week, you know, any time this year. Uh, we're just looking for great Tog photos. So send those in to deanderson at thefisherman.com. Text them to the number on the screen. And just put Tog Jig giveaway in the subject line so I know what it's for. And uh, we're going to wrap this one up at the end of the month. So not next week's report, but the week after that, uh, we will pick a winner for those. And, of course, we also have the like, tackle grab bag thing here with all the different lure makers in there. And we're going to be running that one through pretty much the end of January. The last Wednesday in January is when that's going to wrap up. And uh, we'll do another giveaway then. So um, get those photos in to me. And, you know, as you guys know, it's just pretty simple. It's got to be a recently caught fish. It's got to show you holding the fish. Other than that, uh, it doesn't matter if you caught it on vacation or if you caught it in your backyard. Uh, get them into me at danderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen and just put giveaway or contest in the, in the subject line so I know what they're for and uh, we'll wrap up another giveaway in a couple months. Well, we talked last week about how the striper bite in Maine has pretty much come to an end. Well, that has spread now into North Shore, Massachusetts. And for a little bit more on that, we'll check in now with James Jukes. Well, reports are up here is guys have completely tapered off the striped bass and uh, looks like they're taking some time off for the holiday this week. Uh, I won't be. I got some things I got to do and get out on the fresh water anyways. I got my striper gear cleaned up, but I'm in there with some fresh water gear. Uh, the guys hit some pike and carp over the weekend saw one guy had a 30 pound carp really nice fish um, and a couple guys had some catfish as well uh, the panfish and the bass have been going pretty well too uh, over the weekend I got into a really solid yellow perch bite at three local ponds made three separate stops banged fish at all three uh, even one fish had stuffed its mouth with a large shiner. The hook didn't even hook him. It got stuck in his mouth and I reeled him in from there. Uh, and those types of bites can be super, super fun. Had fun for about six hours at the three different spots total. Uh, so everybody should be getting out there. Uh, everybody enjoy your Thanksgiving and be thankful for what we have and what we can do. and all the fun stuff that comes along with it. Alrighty, that's it from here. Things have deteriorated pretty quickly as far as striped bass go from the North Shore all the way down through Boston and pretty much up to the canal. Uh, there's still a few, you know, rogue schools of stripers out there, mostly small fish, and uh, not a lot of guys out there trying to catch them. So that is pretty much a, a wrap on anything north of the Cape right now. Uh, what most guys are doing now is fishing for trout. The trout fishing has been really good. Uh, the state did a phenomenal job with their fall stocking. You can go on the DFW website to find the place closest to you that was stocked with trout. Bite's been very good, reportedly. There's been some pretty nice fish, and um, you know things are looking good in that department. Crossing over the canal out onto the Cape, uh, trout fishing has taken center stage out there too, and we've seen some really nice fish coming out of places like Peters and Hamblin and uh, up inside Nickerson State Park. Also, the largemouth bass fishing continues to impress. A jerkbait bite has been exceptional. And, um, you know, we got a couple different 
weather systems coming through over these next few days, which should uh, which should fire that bite up again. So keep your eye on the weather, and uh, anytime we get one of those cold fronts coming, get out there and throw the jerk bait. You're definitely going to catch some fish. On the striper end of the spectrum, the outer cape and the bayside beaches are pretty much done now. Uh, one place we are hearing about some striped bass being caught on the cape is the south shore inlet, so like down along the uh, Nantucket Sound shoreline. Some of those ponds uh, hold holdover bass too, so some of those fish are heading in for the winter. Other ones are just heading by, migrating by, but there is still a bite there. Still some fish, you know, up to 30 inches, but most of these fish are definitely going to be schoolies at this point. You push through into Buzzards Bay, and um, you've got a little bit better opportunity there. There's been some, you know, I don't want to call them big, but there's been some bigger striped bass for the guys that are still fishing in that area, basically from the west end of the canal out to, you know, New Bedford or Dartmouth or something like that. Um, but most of these fish that I'm calling, you know, bigger are is still in the mid 30 inch class, and it's pretty much all surf fishermen at this point. But they are there, and the bigger fish are being caught at night. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, the canal had a pretty good week. Uh, a bunch of fish moved into the east end. They were pushing butterfish and silver sides. I think there was some peanut bunker in the mix as well. And, uh, you know, sort of an unexpected topwater bite for this late in the season. Uh, doesn't sound like they pushed all the way through yet, so I have a feeling that, you know, those fish are still going to be, you know, still still be available throughout the rest of this week. And um, the, the big thing that everyone kept saying is that they were way out in the middle, so you really had to be able to, you know, get it out there to, to hook up. But um, it was a pretty good bite. Most of the fish were 24 to 34 inches, but a couple of fish that touched 40 inches were supposedly caught. Never saw a photo, but uh, that's what I heard. And uh, heading out of the canal all the way out west toward Westport, uh, the tog bite has been really good out that way. It's continuing. Jason said he's going to keep his boat in the water, so you may want to give him a call if you want to, uh, you know, add tog to your Thanksgiving menu this week and uh, or beyond. But the bite's been very good. Still some codfish mixing in. The fish are moving a little bit deeper, but the bite doesn't seem to be slowing down at all. And that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Moving over into Rhode Island, there's two main species of focus. That's striped bass and tog right now. But there's a lot of other species uh, kind of filtering into the catches out there. But before we get into that, let's take a stop quick with uh, TJ Kopecki. Hey guys, thanks Dave. Got a quick video for you for this Thanksgiving week. Um, uh, first thing we're going to start off with is I got a quick note for anybody who watches their boat in Fall River uh, behind Barrett's waterfront. Um, they've taken the floats out so you can't launch your boat there anymore for the season. Um, I only know that I tried to do that this weekend, uh, this past weekend, and uh, we ended up just launching in Tiverton. So uh, if you're trying to launch your boat there, it's, everything's closed up for the season there. Uh, and I'm assuming they're taking the ones out of Watup upon also uh, in Fall River uh, at that boat ramp for uh, the state of Massachusetts. So uh, just look for other ways to get your boat in the water um, like we did. Um, getting to the fishing. Uh, I still think the fishing is good. Don't put your rods away yet. Uh, we actually had an outing on Sunday and uh, we got into the bay. We stayed in the bay uh, only because the swell out in the ocean was... Uh, like six to six, six to eight feet out off of such as point. We get out there, it wasn't really fishable. We kept pulling the anchor. Uh, we couldn't set up on a good spot. So we moved back into the bay and uh, I went to back to my old faithful spot underneath the uh, Maho Bridge and uh, joined a couple of different boats that were there, some anglers fishing and everyone was doing good. Saw some nice sea bass get pulled up. We caught some, uh, we caught some nice sea bass. We caught a lot of, a lot of shot. Uh, to talk, but we also got um, into a couple of good keepers uh, up to 20 inches. So uh, I think the fishing's still going to be good. Uh, we're going to give it another go um, in a couple of weekends from now just to see uh, if those fish are still there. I know it's slowed down a little bit up inside of the Warren River, and I really think that the fish are starting to move out and get into there. Not winter quite yet, but into that water, they're moving more towards the ocean front. So I would say start looking in your, your haunts around Jamestown. It's probably still really good up there for Tatog and uh, sea bass. Uh, there have been some small reports of still some small striped bass uh, underneath the Barrington River inside the pilings. Uh, so if you're there and you have an opportunity to fish there, the bite's been pretty good at night. And 
my friend Chad's been catching uh, 15 to 20 inch fish. So they are smaller. And I know that those are probably going to be the fish that are going to winter up uh, way up inside of the 100 acre cove, um, which is a great spot to fish in the spring because I always know that there's some uh, holdover stripers that stay up in there. So um, I think that's what you're going to have there in the, water, in the Barrington River. Uh, moving out into the Taunton River, uh, there's still guys togging. I see them every morning on my way to work, uh, fishing from the uh, Brightman Street Bridge, the old train bridge. So I didn't have a chance to get out and see, uh, to actually see what they were catching. But there are guys fishing there, so I'm assuming that they're catching fish. Um, I haven't seen many stripers outside in the bay. We did see a lot of birds working as we went up the Sakonet. Lots of birds floating in the water, lots of birds. So at some point, we assumed that they were working on some stuff. When we did get out in the ocean, we did see a lot of birds crash in the water. So I'm going to say there's still are some stripers around uh, out there, not knowing of the size. But, uh, I mean, the days are numbered um, on that. But uh, like I said, if ground fishing continues, you know, don't put your rods away. Um, I just wanted to wish everybody uh, a happy Thanksgiving and uh tight lines if you're going to get out there so i think the main species that most guys are ch chasing in rhode island waters right now is definitely tog uh, these fish have started to move a little bit deeper but that has sort of set up a uh a, a little increase in the bite because a lot of those fish that were hanging in the shallower water that still hadn't moved out have now moved out so everything's kind of on that on those same pieces of bottom and the bite has gotten better um, a lot of keeper size fish are being caught, like five to seven pound fish, and then you've got you know, good numbers of eight to ten pounders, and we're still hearing about lots of big fish. Um, you know, at least a few teen size fish we're hearing about every week, which is which is exceptional. Most of these fish are in 40 to 80 feet of water right now. Some guys are fishing even deeper than that and having success. There's codfish mixing in, there's black sea bass missing, mixing in, and uh, by all accounts, the bottom fishing has been very good. It doesn't seem to matter where you are so much, just that you're in the right depth and on a good piece of structure. Um, if you're definitely looking to target codfish, it seems like Cox's has slowed down, but the East Grounds and Shark Ledge have been picking up. So uh, that's the direction you might want to head if you're looking for codfish. On the striped bass end of things, again, it's similar to the tog. It's, uh, there's no one place where it's really been exceptionally good. Most of the fishing that's happening now is taking place during the day. It's mostly guys heading out with binoculars and just looking around, trying to find a fish. And, um, you know, sometimes they're finding them, sometimes they're not. The biggest fish I heard of from Rhode Island waters this week was 43 inches. So you figure that's probably high 20 pound range, could even push over 30. And, uh, you know, that's a solid fish for any time of the year. So, um, you know, that's, that's good motivation for any surf fisherman to get out there. Uh, this is typically a good week for the nighttime surf fishermen. Not a lot of guys are doing it. It's going to be cold. I know we're going to have some snotty weather, so you're going to have to pick your nights. But um, you know, throwing needlefish, throwing live eels, this is a good time of year to get that last good one of the season. So don't give up just yet. For a little bit more on some of the things that are going on in central Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. Hey Dave, John Lee, JL Charters, Point Judith, Rhode Island. Uh, we've had quite a bit of wind this week, um, so I only got out twice. Your, your regular blackfish, sea bass, codfish trips, um, they've been good. We've been catching some fish. Um, between the weather, I actually went shore fishing. It was kind of nice to take a break from the boat and fish. I did a freshwater trip a couple of boys and then I did a shad trip, light tackle, had a lot of fun, fishing wasn't great but we got three largemouth bass on spinner baits um, so I'll, I'll, I'll likely start doing that a little bit more. I'd like to get a few more codfish trips before uh, the boats coming out December 11th um, and maybe a giant tuna trip that, that opens up the first of December. Take care. Moving over into Connecticut, we pretty much can split Long Island Sound in half now. We can talk Eastern Sound and Western Sound. We don't have to get too fancy with it. Eastern Sound, tog are starting to move deeper now. Uh, all those fish that were up in the Thames for seemed like weeks on end have started to push out now. In fact, most of them have pushed out. We're not hearing about any, you know, any consistency on keepers at all for tog. However, a lot of striped bass are moving into the Thames, uh, probably going up there to winter over. 
and a lot of these fish have been in the like you know right around 30 inches so right around the slot limit which has been good there's been a few bigger ones and a few smaller ones and it's been a lot of top water action with some paddle tails uh, getting it done as well moving out of the Thames out along toward the toward the Niantic Bay all those deeper ledges 40 to 80 feet are holding tog right now uh, hearing about lots of sea bass mixing in with them also so the bottom fishing has been really good in the eastern sound um, and it should hold up right through the end of the season on November 28th. So that's that's exciting stuff. Also a few codfish mixing in in that area, especially as you get out more toward fishers and into some of that deeper water. Getting up toward the uh, Connecticut River, the lower river has really started to slow down as far as striped bass go. Uh, seems like either a lot of the fish went up or the other half of them went out. Uh, there are some fish holding on Long Sand Shoal right now. Which is, uh, which is typical for this time of the year. That's, a, that's typically an eel bite, and uh, also it puts out some nice fish at this time of the year, so it's definitely something you can concentrate on. Togging has been good throughout that whole area as well. Uh, for a little bit more on what's going on in the Connecticut River area, let's check in now with Captain Mike Roy from Real Cast Charters. Hey, what's up guys? For this week's fish report, the black fishing is still good. Uh, this time of year, they tend to go a bit deeper as the water's cooling, uh, but, um, again, a lot of areas have been picked through, so if you could find some areas that haven't been picked through, you should still be able to get a limit of blackfish. Uh, for the striper fishing, uh, I would start to focus my effort on the rivers and estuaries where these fish hold over for the winter. They're going to begin to move into those areas, and you should uh, get some pretty good fish in there. Uh, there's definitely a migration in the western part of Long Island Sound uh, out into the Hudson River, so uh, you can expect to catch striped bass, uh, particularly on soft plastics, uh, like a five, six inch finesse fish or sluggo. It's gonna work really well this time of year. Uh, that's all I have for you, good luck. Now we'll head inland and check in with Rowan Lytle. Hey everybody, uh, so we're definitely looking at some fairly mild conditions again. Cooling off quite a bit though. Uh, the weekend is looking pretty chilly, Saturday especially. Uh, Expect some skim ice on some of the coves, especially early in the morning. We're definitely not anywhere near ice time yet. Uh, and with El Nino conditions on the way this winter, we probably won't have a particularly good ice season. Um, but cooling conditions mean a lot of those larger predator species are going to be on the slow side. So either finesse presentations with artificials or bait. If you're doing a lot of pike fishing this time of year, live baits or, or cut bait under a float are definitely good ways to go. Dead bait on the bottom works quite well too, um, but they'll definitely be a little more fickle on your artif artificial presentations, but if you're still fishing artificials, just fish it slower. Fish slower, subtler presentations, and you should still be able to pull some fish. Uh, the panfish fishing is definitely chugging along. Yellow perch especially very active in these cooler water temperatures, uh, so you'll have plenty of that action in the slack deep coves and in the marinas. Uh, get out there, get after it, good luck. Now leaving the river and taking a right or a west turn toward Westbrook. We'll check in now with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. Really good tog bite out there still continuing despite those dropping water temps. Uh, it's that time of year where there are a lot of boats off the water. So if you can find a piece of structure that hasn't been picked over yet, um, you're probably going to have it to yourself. And there's a really good chance you can get onto a great bite. Um, I've had buddies out recently doing really well, still getting double digit fish. Um, and in water anywhere from 30 to 50. They do seem to have moved a bit deeper this week um, now that that water temp is dropping, which makes sense, follows the typical pattern of the season. Um, but as long as you can keep finding those spots that haven't been kind of picked apart yet um, since that season opened on October 10th, there's a really good chance you can limit out pretty quick and, and have a lot of fun um, after that as well. Uh, still some stripers being caught. We've had guys coming into the shop giving some pretty solid reports, but it definitely seems like a right place, right time kind of thing right now. Um, there are obviously anglers out there who have their late season spots who are probably going to pick fish all the way up until Christmas. Um, but for kind of the average angler right now, targeting stripers is definitely getting tougher by the day with the water temps dropping. And your best bet is to kind of be out there probably tog fishing and, and keep an eye out for diving birds because they're definitely still blitzing fish. Um, those little guys have put on feed bags. They're getting ready to kind of tuck into these tidal creeks for the winter or um, the late leaders are getting ready to kind of move out uh, this late in the season. So. Um, that's where things are at right now. Um, some definite weather to keep an eye on in the fall as always, but uh, if you can get out there on a good day right now, uh, the bite is still absolutely worth it. And um, we've still got about a week left of tog season, so uh, get out there and enjoy it.
togging in the Western Sound seems to be holding up quite well, and the sea bass fishing has been very good as well. Uh, these fish are holding on a lot of those wrecks, a lot of muddy bottom out there, but you find those rock piles, those little ledges, or you find those wrecks and you're going to find the fish. Uh, it's also still been some really big porgies out that way, so that's, um, you know, they're, they're moving out quickly, but they are still there, and when you find them, they're typically big ones, so good bottom fishing in the Western Sound. I uh, have heard about some big striped bass coming out of the Western Sound as well. Most of them by surf fishermen, uh, some of them quite large, like this one here that looks to be at least in the mid 40 pound class that was caught last week. So, um, you know, a lot of fish are moving up into the Housatonic. The Housatonic has been giving up some good catches as well, fish up into the 20 pound class I've seen so far from the Housie. So the striped bass bite out in the Western Sound seems to be alive and well, especially for the shore fishermen. For a little bit more on what's going on in the Western Sound, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. This past week, the Diamond Jig and Bite 11B has been great. There's still some big bluefish in the mix. We've seen some half-bitten schoolies coming into the boat along our beaches, Sherwood Island to Fairfield, Penfield Reef. Long Beach and Stratford are still really good. They're still getting some nice blackfish locally shallow around the islands and then our deeper water wrecks and reefs like 28 and the Celtic wreck. Middle grounds, we've seen some really good blackfish and some knothead sea bass too. And then the mouth of the Housatonic is really starting to heat up as the fish start to enter for the holdover season. Porgies are still around. Guys are getting them from the boats, you know, mixed in with blackfish in our deeper water wrecks. There's some really big hubcaps. We've seen like 16 to 17 inches. That's a really big porgy for this time of year. And then we're moving into Thanksgiving. On the back end of this moon, we should see, you know, the Housatonic really start to heat up as we move well into December, into Christmas, you know, the lower part as the fish start to work their way upriver. Thanks and good luck. And one more little tidbit about Max before we close this thing out. I just want to let you guys know that Max wrote a great article in the December edition about fishing in the Housatonic River. If you've uh, always wanted to go try that place or if you haven't been able to crack the code, check out Max's article. You will definitely crack the code after that. He's a great fisherman and he's become a great writer. So check that out. That's what we have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there and maybe give yourself something to be thankful for this holiday. Um, still a lot of striped bass around from the canal all the way down through Connecticut and into, you know, crossing over into New York. A lot of tog fishing going on and then of course there's been a lot of sh salmon and trout stockings going on which has made the freshwater fishing uh, really great pretty much region wide. If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. You'll get a full, free taste of everything that we offer. We cover all the fishing from Delaware up to Maine. We have fishing reports that do that, and we have, I mean, we cover every angling discipline that you can think of. Offshore, inshore, kayak, paddleboard, surf, freshwater, it's all covered. Um, you're going to get 12 issues, the paper ones, you know, like magazines, sent to your house. And you're also going to get 26 digital editions sent to your email box every week during the season. And beyond that, you're going to get access to all three editions. So we've got the New England edition, which is my edition. We have the Long Island Metro edition, and we have the New Jersey and Delaware Bay edition. That covers a huge swath of the East Coast, and it's all going to be covered, and it's going to be 30 bucks. The best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. If you're still not interested, after you check that out, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube, and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.